Welcome everybody to today's webinar session on what's new with Nodes and Red Deck. I'm, as Tracy mentioned, I am your host, Dutch Rapley, and we're going to cover a little bit about nodes and especially some about the new features with nodes and Red Deck itself. Nodes are central to Red Deck. Nodes are how Red Deck knows about your infrastructure. Nodes can be defined to connect to anything that you want to in your infrastructure, whether it's uh, Windows servers, Linux or Unix servers, and Red Deck can even connect to firewalls, routers, switches, Anything that can be connected over the internet and have some process that can be automated, Rundeck can connect to those devices. And nodes is the term that we use to declare, you know, the things that Rundeck connects to. Nodes, um, as we just mentioned, are things that Rundeck connects to. But we got to talk about where do those nodes come from? How are they defined in Rundeck? And those nodes that you use within Rundeck are defined by what are called node res or node sources. Uh, if we go back, if we take a look at my Rundeck instance here and we go to project settings and we look at edit nodes. And you know, this is something that typically a project administrator would have access to or somebody that you give permissions to have access to this. The, the default tab here is the sources. And at the bottom, you'll notice that we can add a node source. Now, node sources are provided through plugins. Every single item that you see listed here is a plugin that's provided with Rundeck Enterprise. Uh, you could also write your own plugins to pull node sources from somewhere else. You might have a database, or maybe you have an API that you can connect to an endpoint. You can write a plugin for that and pull in node sources that way. Traditionally, you know, if you work with Rundeck community in the past, nodes may have come from a YAML file or a file that sits on the Rundeck server itself. The plugins that you can add to Rundeck or that come with Rundeck Enterprise make that a little more dynamic. You can connect to Amazon AWS EC2 instances and dynamically pull that inventory. You can also do it for other cloud providers like Azure and Google Cloud and vCenter. Uh, maybe you have, instead of a file sitting on the Rundeck server, you're running a Rundeck cluster in Enterprise. And you could have that definition sit in a Git repository somewhere and Rundeck can pull the nodes. And so anytime you want to add or remove nodes, you would make a commit, push it up to your remote repository, and Rundeck would pull those in. If you add ServiceNow and use ServiceNow as a CMDB, you could pull that in as well. But nodes come from node sources. And part of today's presentation, we're going to talk about some of the, the features around nodes, especially node enhancers that help you make working with dynamic resources a little bit more flexible. Because one of the problems that we come into is if we're dynamically pulling nodes from AWS, for instance, we can get all kinds of information about those nodes, and especially including tags that are, that are attached to them. But, you know, that's not going to give us the information to authenticate against those nodes. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to tell us about the nodes and go, here, here's what you use. Here's the username and password. We have to provide that in some other way for Rundeck to work with that. When a node comes in from, some, whether it's defined through a file or it comes from dynamically from some other source, nodes are going to have node attributes. Node attributes are things that um, some of them are required by Rundeck for connecting to the nodes and other attributes can be provided by as metadata for you to use within Rundeck itself. We're going to take a quick look at a nodes project that I have set up and talking about nodes and, and showing how nodes or node attributes were used as an example here. I'm going to add a, a basic source here. I'm going to add another resource YAML text here. And uh, this is going to be a basic node definition. And so, you know, we need a, a name. Um, this is the host name that we get from our EC2 instance, but maybe I want something a little bit more friendly that I can use in Rundeck for node filters. So this one is going to be my Tomcat 3 instance. That's a name that we can use. Then Rundeck also is going to need uh, a couple of other attributes called a host name, a username, and then some way of actually connecting to this server. This server is using a SSH key. And so I'm going to use the node attribute SSH key storage path here. And then um, I have this set up in my Rundeck key storage. And so when Rundeck goes connect, it's going to use this to connect to this server. There's a couple of attributes that I'm not specifying here that are also important to Rundeck. They are the node executor and file copier. If you've never, if you've worked with Rundeck in the past, whether it's enterprise or community, and you never heard of these attributes, there's a good chance that you set them up as a default in the project configuration. Uh, we can add other attributes to this instance. I'm going to leave these tags pull and service here for now. But at the minimum, this is what Rundeck needs to connect to a node. 
Other attributes that we could add that, uh, again, can be used as node filters. We might want to add an environment tag or environment attribute here, and we'll call this a dev server. Now, these node attributes can come from a variety of other places as well. If we come back and look at our examples project here, all of these nodes were sourced dynamically from EC2, as you saw in my node source we'll see that there are several attributes on these servers. Some of these are tags created by environment, group, all came from specifically my uh, tags that are on the EC2 instance. Other attributes like instance ID, name, post name, all of those were provided from EC2 directly through the use of that plugin. But as you can see, attributes that start to um, show that they can be quite useful with your node definitions. Anything that's an attribute on a node, you can create a node filter based on. So maybe if I wanted to say all my servers that had an environment demo, uh, that's gonna come up in my search here. And then I can even go out and build filters that say, hey, um, environment demo created by admin, we can show those as well. You know, and the purpose of having nodes, especially dynamic sources for nodes in Red Deck are very important because uh, we got two different aspects of it, right? We have an infrastructures today that change daily or hourly, that new servers are added, old ones are taken down. And maybe we want Rundeck to be a little agnostic of servers being added and taken down. We just say, hey, a server that matches, you know, maybe all my Tomcat servers, I want to run this job. Or all my web servers, I want to run that job. Or my, all my database servers, I want to run that job. So the dynamic sources are very important with this because, you know, we don't have to go into Rundeck and manually add these, manage these files or manage the the files or the entries or through the node wizard, we can make our run deck a little dynamic in how it deals with the nodes in our infrastructure. But it also gives us a little bit of flexibility too, because uh, with servers changing, and especially with people in our organization, our colleagues that are using run deck, maybe we don't want to give them access to directly to a server to log in, but we want them to have the capability to run a process. Well, by creating, having nodes in Rendeck and having jobs that connect to those nodes or run against those nodes, we can democratize the actions that happen within our environment and hand those off to other people and know they're always gonna run predictably and correctly and, know, and, and take solace in knowing that our environment's not gonna be compromised. In Rendeck, we have some new features that we've added here. Um, the node wizard, it gives you a, a nice GUI for adding and managing nodes directly within Rundeck. We've also added node enhancers. Node enhancers are not exclusive to Rundeck Enterprise. They're also available in the community. They're, they're incredibly handy because you can add several attributes and, and, and an attribute or several attributes to multiple nodes with a single node enhancer definition. We'll talk about some of those use cases. And then we've also added health checks. And health checks in Rundeck aren't necessarily intended to be a monitoring tool, but they can reach out and grab some information about your nodes and add that information as attributes. And then we can use that and write node filters. So let's start with the node wizard. Uh, if I want to come into a project and I want to add a, a node wizard source, I would come into my project settings and I would edit nodes. And then I would pick the node wizard as a source. We would save this and we would save this definition. Now we've added this as a node source, but we haven't added any nodes here. So if we want to add or edit nodes that are part of the node wizard, we'll come over to the edit menu and just like a file based node definition, we can click modify. And then what we'll notice here is that we're going to see a GUI for editing and editing nodes. And we're going to see the basic attributes that we would expect Rendeck to have. We would come in and put a node name here, a definition, a host, some, some custom attributes. And then we can also handle authentication here. We can add a username, node exec executor, and then a file copier. And then we can also add additional attributes as well. And I'm going to jump in. I already have another project configured with some nodes. And we're going to take a look at see what that looks like in practice. If I jump back over to this nodes project and, and I come over and I take a look at my node wizard, you'll see that I've already added a few entries here, a couple of different entries. Uh, this project has a Tomcat 1 and a Tomcat 2. I'll come in and I'll add a Tomcat 3 to this project as well. We'll give it this IP address. This is the IP address for this instance. We're going to say it's part of the Unix family. Uh, we're not going to give this one any tags yet. And at a minimum, we need to give it a, a username. And here's where we're going to, and we said we'd talk about this a little bit, um, node executor and file copier, you know, within this definition, um, 
we're going to specify, hey, what executor and file copy do we want to use with this node? This is going to override what we specify as the default for the project. So these can be attached individually, these node definitions. And then I'm going to pick my SSH key. And that's all we need. And once we add that, we can click the add node. And what you'll see here is that Tomcat 3 is going to show up. Now, any one of these nodes, I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. I'm going to jump back in and modify any one of these nodes. We can always modify those attributes as well. And a little bit of a lag here. You'll also notice there was a YAML based editor here, but I can jump back into this node and I can change some information about it. I can add a custom attribute. I can add custom attributes. I can add other information as well. And then we also can look at the editor and the editor is going to give us that YAML syntax that we might be familiar with. And we can jump in and add additional entries here. You know, once we have an entry, we might find that it's easier to just copy and paste. Uh, we can do that directly within this screen. And I didn't mean edit out of that. Or we can even copy directly from the node wizard itself. I can duplicate this node. Uh, maybe I want one called Tomcat4. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the host name for Tomcat4. And you'll notice I'll just add this in. And then I instantly have a Tomcat4 instance that I can connect to. And then if I save that, what we're going to notice is that this is going to now show up as node 4. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about nodes yet and node attributes is that node attributes can be stacked. Oh, and I meant to put a 4 up here. Uh, node attributes themselves can be stacked. If we take a look at our Tomcat 1 instance, uh, you'll notice that I have a tag, or I'll add a tag, and we'll call it production. And that should have show up now when we look at our view here. I don't know that it actually caught. I didn't see it catch when you typed that. I'll, I'll just I'll just suggest picking up. There we go. Okay, you have to hit enter. I'll add this tag here for production, and you'll notice that um, this is added here, right? This is my tags for the server. If I save this, that is now added. What I can do is I can add a, another source, or you'll notice I have other sources here. I have a res, resource YAML text here, and what I'm going to show you here is that this Tomcat one. I'm going to delete this Tomcat three. Uh, so we don't have any confusion. This Tomcat 1, maybe I want to override that attribute specifically for this instance. You'll notice that there's an order here. One, two, three. Uh, every time we add a node source, we can have multiple sources that, that are the same type. You know, we're not limited to just one node wizard. And we can also have the same node name defined in multiple places. And by doing this, uh, what's at the bottom of this list, the the, the attribute is Highlander it wins, right? There's only one. It concatenates all the attributes together. This is a value that's going to persist. Now you can move these around so that, you know, they don't have to be defined in order. You can determine by the placement which attribute becomes the one that uh, is going to present the value. Now we have a node wizard here. And what I just mentioned as well is that we can have multiple node sources. If you wanted one node wizard for your development nodes and maybe one node wizard for your production nodes, you can have multiple node wizard entries as well. And I'm going to delete this one since we're not being used here. Now you notice that I put the production tag on that Tomcat one instance. Um, when we take a look at our nodes and we take a look at our attributes here, uh, when I come to Tomcat one, the tags works a little bit differently, but you'll see here is that tags get concatenated. So if tags are defined in multiple areas, but if I maybe, um, I, if I wanted Tomcat to want to use a different SSH key uh, storage path, I could specify that in a later entry and that's going to override this one. So that's it for uh, node wizards. Let's talk about node enhancers for a little bit. Um, node enhancers are used in a variety of different ways. Node enhancers can be used to add, let me get to the right project here. They can be used to globally add or change uh, attributes on a node. They can be used to add uh, icons to represent what the nodes are. And then they can also be used in conjunction with health checks. And we'll talk about health checks a little bit more detail in a couple of minutes. But uh, with node enhancers, the three different types are health status, icon, attribute match. And these are incredibly handy when we're dealing with uh, nodes that are dynamically sourced. For the, the, these Tomcat servers, I have an attribute called environment as a value demo. And I can say, hey, for all the servers that have this attribute, I want to use this dev pim. 
maybe for a different environment, I want to use the production temp. And I can also add tags based on this. Now, the key thing to keep in mind here is that these attributes that we want to add uh, aren't in the YAML format that we're familiar with. This would be, have to be a Java properties format. And then this attribute match, it doesn't have to be absolute. We can base this off of equality or regex or inequality and to determine you know, how many attributes we want to add to these, maybe these notes that are, that are dynamically sourced from somewhere else. We can also use a icon for this one. I said for all my demo servers, you know, the, the attribute environment, the value demo, use the font awesome server icon and make it green. And what we'll see with a combination of those two is that when we look at our nodes, we'll see that the servers have a green font awesome server icon. And we'll also notice that the SSH key storage path here is pointing to this key and then um, we also have the dev tag that was added to these servers. The other type of node enhancer that we have, now this is used in conjunction with health checks. And with health checks, we'll go to our project settings and we'll edit nodes. Our health checks are enabled with a basic question mark here. I mean, a check mark, you say, hey, we wanna enable this. That's step one. Once we enable our health checks, we need to come in and we need to tell Rundeck that, hey, we need to add the health check attributes to the nodes through the node enhancer itself. Now here's what health checks give us. When we look at our nodes, the first thing it gives us is this health check menu item here that we can look at uh, a list of our servers, all of the health checks that are configured with those nodes. And then we can also look at the configuration for this. Now health checks are not a one for one. You don't have to create a single health check for every node. You'll create a health check that's gonna do a certain thing. And then you're gonna use a node filter that's gonna target that node. Now in this case, we're gonna say, for, hey, for every server that has the tag demo Tomcat, we're gonna to run this command. Basically this command says, hey, take the node's private IP address, see if 488 is answering. If it's not, this node is unhealthy. When we come and look at our nodes here, and I can leave this page since I don't need to save any changes here. When we look at our nodes, we see that two nodes were unhealthy. And through the uh, addition of the node enhancers and health check and that, that command that's running on a regular basis, we have this status that tells me, hey, how long has this been down? It tells me that the status is unhealthy and uh, because the command failed. And then I can now use this as a node filter. Now, this is an overall status here. I can have multiple health checks that are associated with the same server. This one's my Tomcat service health check. And then the global one's gonna be a concatenation of all this, right? If one of any one of my health checks is unhealthy, I'm globally gonna be having an unhealthy server. If I click on this, I can start building out my, this is kind of like a node filter wizard, right? For everything that has environment demos and unhealthy, that's gonna come up. I wanna see my healthy servers. Now, this is okay for viewing these in uh, the nodes view but I can also use this as a job filter, right? To only run a job that's gonna target my unhealthy servers. And maybe you have PagerDuty that's uh, running a job within Rundeck and PagerDuty is triggering the, you know, the healthy, unhealthy node filter and that may be on a certain job. To give you an example of what else health checks can do, you know, it does have to be, hey, is this service answering? We're gonna take a quick look at this project and what we'll notice here is that we have other health checks that are configured to test Hey, is my JProxy instance healthy? Is my Nginx instance healthy? Is my uh, Node.js service healthy? And uh, these can be run a variety of different commands. I've even seen a command that used a health check to see how many Linux packages needed to be updated and then add that as an attribute to a node uh, that you could also use in your node filters as well. But like I said, you know, the whole purpose of node filters is it intended to be a monitoring tool but it is to give you some attributes on your nodes that within Rundeck, you can kind of see what the status of things are and you can also write node filters on those. That is it for uh, the new features in Rundeck, the node wizard, the node enhancers and the health checks. Um, we'll have uh, with this, this presentation will be provided as a resource with uh, once it's posted to resources.rundeck.com and uh, we'll have some links within this presentation that you can click on that will take you to the, our references for our node resource model, our node enhancers and our health checks as well. And as always, you can reach me and my colleague Pam at Rundeck. Mine's Dutch at rundeck.com. Pam's is Pam Wanson. And um, thanks for hanging and joining us today. Mm -hmm.